Today is a special day, as it marks the release of my composition, Sweet and G, for a flute and guitar on Apple Music and Spotify. The link to download or stream the LP is in the description, along with a link to purchase the sheet music. I could just leave it at that and present a video on some other topic, but I put a lot of work into this piece and I figured I'd use this video to explain the suite a little bit further. In 2019, my good friend and world-class guitarist, Rainer Maria Nero, offered me the chance to write a piece for him and his colleague Fabian Franco Ramirez, who was an amazing flutist. Initially, I planned to write a sonata for the duo, but abandoned that in favor of a suite, which would be meant as a sort of complementary piece to my Baroque suite for two violins, which I had written in a very conservative and traditional fashion. On the other hand, with this new suite for flute and guitar, I wanted to try and breathe some fresh air into the Baroque suite. I had the wonderful but often neglected pairing of guitar and flute to work with, and wanted to try something different with this sort of new Baroque suite. So I went about trying to break as many of the formal rules for each dance as I could without destroying the general feeling or integrity of each dance. So how did I do this? As with my Baroque suite for two violins, I used the same five Baroque dances of the Allemande, Courant, Sarabande, Gavotte, and Gigue. This time I gave each movement Italian names as a sort of homage to Italy's history of adapting and stylistically changing the standard Baroque dance forms that would often come out of France. First of all, let's start with the Allemande, or Allemande. <laughs> Typically, alamans are written in four-quarter time, but I decided to remove an eighth note to make a seven-eighth time. This idea of changing the accepted time signature for each dance applies to every movement from my suite, and is explained in greater detail in the sheet music to the piece available in the description. I then subdivided many of the measures into four unequal pulses, so instead of sort of the bass rhythm of four-quarter notes, as is the case with a typical alamand, I divided the measure into two quarter notes and two dotted eighth notes. I then, when subdividing this bass rhythm, tried to keep the subdivisions into groups of four in order to evoke the duple meter of the allemand. In the case of the dotted eighth notes, I divided these into four equal notes via 32nd note quadruplets. This interplay of normal duple meter 16th notes and 32nd note quadruplets led to a very interesting rhythmic character in this movement. <laughs> And as the movement progresses, the strict duple subdivisions dissolve away into a very clear 7 8 time. So, as I felt this movement strayed the most away from the Allemand form, I considered it more of a prelude, which explains the title of Preludio Quasi Una Allemande. For the Courant, or Corrente, I chose a 13th 16th time signature for the majority of the movement. As explained in my Understanding Form video on the Courant, Courants are usually in 3 quarter or 3 half time, so I started with a 3 quarter time and added an additional 16th note to the time signature which gave me a 13th 16th time. This allowed me to subdivide the measure into two groups of 4 16th notes and one group of 5 16th notes. This leads to something that feels almost like 3 quarter time but isn't quite the same as one quarter pulse is ever so slightly longer. All in all, I was immensely pleased with how this movement turned out. For the Sarabanda, I divided a 5 8 time into three unequal pulses with two dotted eighth notes and one quarter note to mimic a triple meter, which is the common time signature for Sarabands. I basically used the Bach Saraband formal mold to structure the movement, so in a way this is the most traditional movement of the suite besides the fact that it's in 5 8 time as opposed to 3 quarter time, and also that I'd kind of say that the progressions and harmonies are not that Baroque sounding. The 
Gavotta Bretona is a gavotte written in five-quarter time. While reading about gavottes a while back, I read that certain regional gavottes of Brittany and France employ five-eighth time for the gavotte instead of the common four-quarter or cut time. I found this intriguing, so I decided to write my own gavotte in five-quarter time as a sort of fusion between the standard gavotte duple meter and the quintuple meter found in some of the gavottes of Brittany. This explains the title of Gavotta Bretona. But besides the movement being in five-quarter time, I still follow much of the standard rules for the gavotte, including the addition of a musette in the middle, which I personally find to have turned out especially nice. Finally, the last movement is the giga, which uses five different time signatures and is subdivided in such a way as to play with triplets, duplets, and three eighth note groupings in a way that is rhythmically very fresh, but still evokes many of the key aspects of a gigue. So that's a quick rundown of my sweet NG. All in all, the process of writing this suite for a flute and guitar was a thoroughly enjoyable endeavor. By trying to figure out how to force typical Baroque rhythms into time signatures that were completely foreign to Baroque composers, I was able to personally discover a myriad of ways of dividing more uncommon time signatures in somewhat logical ways, all the while trying to keep the music in a tonal framework. What this ultimately enabled was the creation of music using very strange meters that still pays homage to the older forms on which the movements were based. In many of my own compositions, I want there to be some strand of the old to the new. Because I think good pieces of music need to have their basis in something that is in some form familiar which is why I used the very archaic Baroque suite mold as the foundation of this piece. It gave me clear guidelines I felt needed to be followed, but at the same time, I allowed myself some wiggle room to break the mold somewhat. So check out the links in the description, as I'd love some feedback on the piece in the comments. Oh, and one more thing. It looks like I'll be reaching 10,000 subscribers very soon. I know this isn't a huge amount in the context of YouTube, but it's huge to me and very humbling. 10,000 people is a lot, so thanks guys. Especially those who've been around since the beginnings of this channel in 2017. I really appreciate it and look forward to making more videos in the years to come. And as always, stay tuned and check out my new composition in the description. Mm -hmm.